Hey there, Bible buddies. I've got another Bible review for you today, and this one is another Cambridge New English Bible. This particular edition is a 1972, and in contrast to the one I just did a review on, this one is actually a uh, personal size version. The one that I showed before was more of a midsize edition, and this one is uh, certainly smaller than that. I'll go ahead and do a comparison for you guys in a little bit, um, but I wanted to review this one also just because, you know, it's a different size, it's a different flavor uh, for those who uh, maybe are looking for something a little bit smaller uh, in the NEB translation. So let's go ahead and take a look at it. It's got that beautiful grain, uh, very similar to the last one. Uh, and they call this an antique French Morocco. We'll go ahead and take a close look at it. You can see all that nice deep grain. There is a very slight uh, perimeter line on the edge there. And it carries over across the spine. We'll take a look at the spine there. We have the New English Bible with Concise Reader's Guide. And we'll take a look at that at the end. And then we have the Cambridge uh, logo down there. And there are some spine indications. They are not raised. Um, they're kind of pressed in. You can kind of see it there. There's one, two, three, four, five of them. Uh, and it does kind of give a nice look to the Bible. I do wish they were raised, but uh, I know that wasn't really the kind of the standard back then. Uh, and these are nice enough, so take a look at the back cover. You have the continuation of that amazing grain. Uh, there's nothing stamped on it. It's a very clean uh, Bible, and then obviously the spine. Uh, but it's a very clean cover, uh, and I can appreciate that. I'm, I, I really like the way that this grain looks. It's one of my favorite grains. Uh, so go ahead and uh, take a look at the gilt here. You can see there are red uh, and yellow head and tail bands. The gilt is very nicely done. Now I wonder, I know that Bibles uh, of a certain era used actual gold on the gold page edges. Uh, I'm curious if this is actual gold because it does look really, really, really shiny. Um, it's a very high gloss finish there on this page edge gilt. I'll go ahead and take a look at the ribbon. The ribbon, uh, much like the other one, does leave something to be desired. Uh, this is just, I don't even know, it's like a fabric. Um, it is not satin finished on either side. It's rough on both sides. Uh, and it's a wider ribbon, and it is a little bit kind of see-through. Um, so just to note, these, <laughs> these didn't have the best ribbons in them. Let's go ahead and get it open. We'll take a look. So you see here on the inside, it is a paste-down liner. We'll take a look at the corner work. It is a synthetic material, the paste-down liner here. We do have it stamped with antique French Morocco. Now I will say to its credit, whatever material it is they used here for this paste-down, um, it does have like a little bit of a kind of a simulated grain to it. I don't know how well you can see that, but there is a little bit of a simulated grain to it, and it is pretty nice. Um, and certainly Cambridge over the years, they've really improved their their synthetic liners. Uh, not that I'm a fan of synthetic liners, I much prefer actual leather liners, but uh, for cost savings, I'm assuming that's why Cambridge has gone with this. Look at the back cover. Let me see the corner work there. Nothing really much to write home about, although I will say the corner work is very fine, the detail. Uh, it almost looks like it was kind of pressed, so I'm guessing they kind of did a rough fold and then pressed it with something with those little lines in it there to get that design. Let's go ahead and get into the biblical text. You have your flyleaf there, and you have a thick sheet of cardstock here, and you have your family record page, your children of marriages, and as is typical for Cambridge, uh, your deaths page, and if you notice, there's no color on the death page, it's just a black and gray. Then we have your first title page, which is the New English Bible. And on the reverse of that, you have some information there about the New English Bible. I'll let you guys pause and take a look if you're interested in it. And we have the second title page there, the New English Bible, Cambridge at the University Press. And we have our copyright page. Go ahead and take a look. There you are. Then we have a preface to the New English Bible. Fairly short. We have our table of contents. Now this one does not include the deuterocanonical books. Um, I do have a couple, um, I think I have one, one Oxford Bible that does have it. Um, so I'll have to do a review on that just so you guys can, uh, you know, if you're interested in getting a copy of the NEB with the Apocrypha, uh, it is kind of out there uh, lingering around. So the Oxford would be the one to have. And we have the Old Testament title page. Let's go back here. 
We have an introduction to the Old Testament. We have a guide to the notes. A little note here on the marginal numbers and how they work as far as the numbering that you can see here. And we have the first book of Moses called Genesis. Now you can see that this is a double column paragraph text. Uh, and there is a uh, triple line drop cap there, which I, which I adore. That's very nice. I'll just kind of skim over the text there for you guys to see it. I'll turn to the next page to get some more details. Now I am a fan of paragraph uh, layouts. Now you will see that the numbers, like I said before, they're kind of pulled up to the side here. And you have the chapters also. Chapter number is a little bit larger and a little bit bolder than the verse numbers here. And at the top you have your book name and the chapters are on the page. Same on the opposite side. Uh, you do have running headers across the top. And then you also have a little summaries here uh, about the section that you're in. So it's nice to have kind of the both of them here. Uh, at the bottom you do have footnotes. Uh, and there is not any cross-references. So I'll go ahead and take a look at a couple of those footnotes. We'll go to a section that might have some more uh, here in a second. But it is a very nice layout. I like it. Here's a few more of those footnotes, actually. We'll take a look there. So I can see some of them. So I'll go ahead and kind of flip through this. And let you guys take a look and see some of the uh, some of the text throughout. This is a very nice edition of the Cambridge uh, NEB, the New English Bible. Let's go ahead and get to the poetic setting. So there you can see Psalms. And it does have a fairly nice layout. Um, it does look like they kind of indented it to make it look like poetry, uh, but they didn't make much of an attempt. There is a slight attempt here and there. You know, you can see here it looks pretty good. Let me get you in tight. Uh, you know, it looks pretty good here, um, but then like down here, I kind of just have like awkward line breaks and, you know, one or two words on each line. Um, so I'm not too sure how they would have, you know, um, what their rationale would have been uh, for their layout in these sections. Uh, it's kind of confusing to me sometimes because it seems like with most translations, there are portions where there's an attempt made, um, but then there's other portions where it seems like there's no attempt made. Uh, and I would I would hope that you know there would be an attempt made across the board, uh, but that generally does not seem to be the case. <laughs> so let's go ahead and get to the New Testament. I'll try and land on the title page here. So here you have the end of the Old Testament, Malachi, and there's a little appendix there. Another appendix. And then you have the New Testament title page. And the New Testament table of contents. This ribbon's fighting me. And we have an introduction to the New Testament. And we have another note on the marginal numbers. And the gospel title page, I guess. <laughs> Then we have the Gospel according to Matthew. So there you are. A beautiful layout once again. Uh, and it is a center justified text, uh, which means that, um, you know, there's no ragged edges on either side. Uh, it's justified, meaning that the text is all aligned uh, on both sides of the columns there. Uh, now, I, I don't prefer this. I actually prefer a ragged edge. Uh, and that's only because sometimes when you're reading like this, you get some really awkward kind of spacing. You can see it here in the first line. Uh, see here it says, uh, you know, a table of descent of, right? And like tables kind of like goofily spread out. And then there's like a lot of extra space in between the lines. And then you can see down here where it says uh, mother, it says uh, mother, mother was Rahab, but was of Obed. And that all seems to be kind of squished. And that's what tends to happen, you know, when you're aligning the uh, the columns like this. Uh, like it looks visually, more visually appealing, um, but I prefer that it's not like this. Only because I'd rather have like normal spacing throughout the lines. Uh, it, it tends to throw my eye off whenever I see either too much spacing or too little spacing. Uh, and certainly if it's too little spacing, it can make the line kind of hard to read. Um, so I'd much rather have it be kind of a, a ragged red edge. Let's go ahead and get to five and six. And you'll see that it is a black letter text here in the NEB. 
So if you might, actually, let's take a break here and I will show you the paper, right? We'll get a nice close up here of the paper. Now this paper is very nice. Um, there is not any line matching going on. Um, I don't I don't know how well you can see through it. But I can kind of see here that like things are a little, it's not a lot, it's not line matched. Um, obviously, you know, if there's um, like a full column, you know, like this, that's unbroken, uh, you know, it'll be line matched. But once you throw a little line break in here, or once you have a, a new chapter here, it'll kind of throw off that spacing. It won't be line matched anymore. Um, so I guess technically it could be line matched in some columns where, uh, you know, there's no breaks on the opposite side of the page, uh, but there was no like specific attempt made for line matching. Either way, it's not really needed because this paper is really outstanding. Very nice paper. Uh, I will say uh, it, is, it is a very matte finished paper. Um, so there's no, there's no uh, glare or anything like that coming off the page. Uh, but the paper is kind of, it was kind of smooth. I mean, not as smooth as like Cambridge's paper nowadays. It's a little bit rougher than that. Um, but it's still a very nice, very nice paper. Let's go ahead and flip to the end here. We'll take a look at that concise reader's guide. I have the last page of Genesis. So it is sometimes it's hard to kind of uh, gauge these things. Let me take a look real quick and we'll, we'll see if we can't figure out these, these, uh, these dates here. So obviously the NEB, the NEB is going to have its copyright date, right? And that probably would have been the first thing that we saw. The first date that might have popped up. Let's take a look at the copyright page. So you have right here this setting. So that means that this setting was completed in 1972. You can see some other dates here. So we have the New Testament, right? And the first edition of the New Testament for the NEB came out in 1961. Then they revised it for a second edition in 1970. And then apparently they had a corrected impression, uh, which if I had a guess, I would probably say that there was some like, um, like scribal errors uh, on the like the plates that they use for printing. So they must have corrected it in 1972 to fix those those kind of small little errors and issues and that sort of thing. Uh, and then you have the Old Testament here, which was first published in 1970, and then the corrected impression in 1972. So this setting, the way that it's laid out here, would have been completed in 1972. Uh, but if we take a look back here at this date code, this date stamp. We can see here that it says 10,000 C 75. So if I had a guess, there might've been 10,000 copies of this text block created in 1975. Uh, now that would have just been this text bo block and probably not the additional helps included. And that probably wasn't when uh, this particular edition was bound, um, but the, the text blocks were produced, I would imagine in 1975 and there were 10,000 of them produced. So we'll go ahead and flip a little bit more here. Back to those reader's helps. I know I got sidetracked, I'm sorry. <laughs> Apologies guys. Uh, but there's the Concise Reader's Guide title page. You know what? I'm going to take this ribbon out because it is driving me absolutely crazy. I'm sorry. <laughs> let's, get, let's get them out of here. You can see how stiff it is. You know, it's, it has that fold in it from just being uh, tucked. And it's like permanently kind of <laughs> permanently, uh, permanently warped there. I'm sure it would unwarp itself with use. but So there we go. We have a preface to the Concise Reader's Guide. And then it starts with the Concise Reader's Guide. I'll go ahead and it up here for you guys to see and essentially what this is is this is like a dictionary concordance uh, if you look at some of the entries you'll see that there's like a brief description of the uh you know the word used uh brief definition uh, and then it shows you kind of a couple uh, examples of where it is used within the bible so i'll just kind of go through it and i think that this is the only thing that this neb has uh, my other neb that i'm going to compare it to here in a second it didn't have any of this um it was pretty uh pretty minimal as far as the extras go you can see here, there's a little entry there on Miriam. Some information there. I'll kind of go to the back. And there you go, your last entry being uh, Zora. There you are. Now, uh, this I would imagine would be the actual production code uh, for this specific series of Bibles. So for the, uh, the antique French Morocco edition, uh, bound with that text block and this uh, concise readers helps. Uh, and I, I have no idea. Again, I have no idea how to read these codes. Uh, the text block codes are usually a little easier to make out. Uh, but like this, I have no idea. I'm assuming this is probably the item number, the 3466AN. Uh, but I do not know what 56, uh, sorry, what 54X means. So there you have it. So let's go ahead and uh, get your measurements and that sort of thing. And then I will, I'll do that comparison to the original NEB that I, that I reviewed for you guys. 
So in height, it measures right at uh, seven and a half inches tall. And it comes in at five and a quarter inches wide. It's like a five by seven. Let's go to thickness here. And for thickness, it is right about an inch and an eighth. It looks like, uh, yeah, about an inch and an eighth thick. So a pretty trim model, uh, definitely a, a more personal size uh, reader. Um, so uh, a little more, you know, you know, personal size, a little more portable. Uh, you know, some people call it a hand size. I don't, I, I don't know. My hands are, like I said before, my hands are a large size. So like <laughs> a hand size Bible for me might not be a hand size Bible for you. I would consider this more like a personal size Bible. Uh, let's go ahead and take a look at the font size. And we'll start with the lowercase here. Uh, we'll do lowercase m and marching. And it looks to be about a 9.5. We have a 9.5 lowercase in comparison to Times New Roman. And for uppercase, we will look at the B. Start with 9.5. So the uppercase looks to be a little bit smaller. The uppercase letters look to be about an eight and a half point font in comparison to the Times New Roman and the lowercase about a nine and a half point font. Uh, and like I say, I always go by the lowercase because there's more lowercase letters. <laughs> so I would equate this to like a nine and a half point font uh, in comparison to Times New Roman. Uh, so that is the font and the measurements. Let's go ahead and grab that other Bible to compare right quick. So it is right here. Now you can see there is a vast size difference. I mean, this one barely fits in the frame. Uh, and I do have a review on this one. I will put a card right here if you guys want to watch it, um, or maybe I'll just link the video at the end uh, for you guys to click on. Uh, but you can certainly see the size difference here, and we will let's go ahead and overlay them. I'll get you there, All right? So you can see it's about an inch, uh, an inch larger in this dimension, and about a half an inch in this dimension, uh, maybe a little bit, a little bit more than a quarter inch. We'll take a look at the text block size, and there is quite a difference there. The uh, Standard size here is, I mean, just a, a normal size Bible, so it's very hefty, uh, much thicker, and much larger in all the dimensions. I'll compare the text right quick. Now, this larger edition was a single column. I'll turn here to numbers and try and get the same spot in the smaller one. There we go, close enough. There you go, you can see the comparison. Now obviously this page size is larger. There's more room to breathe. Um, you know, you have a little bit slightly larger margins on the side. Um, but the interesting thing to note is this font is a lot bolder than this one. Uh, and also, uh, you know, for me personally, uh, once the lines tend to start getting about this long, uh, I tend to have a hard time going between the lines. I tend to get lost. <laughs> what happens is I tend to start reading the same line over and over again. So I'll start reading and then I'll jump back to the same line and start reading it again. Uh, so my eyes just have a hard time tracking on the page. Um, so I would imagine this would probably suit me much better uh, as far as uh, mitigating mitigating that. So um, just my two cents. Uh, but you can see certainly, you know, the double column layout here versus the single column. Uh, and like I said, a, a darker font here. Uh, but it is also interesting to note that the letting, the letting is the spacing between the lines. Uh, the letting looks like it's ever so slightly uh, larger on this edition. The lines look like they're spaced out just a hair more than over here. Um, so yeah, kind of a neat, a neat comparison there if you guys are in the market for a uh, Cambridge uh, New English Bible. Now, I would imagine when Cambridge produced these, you know, judging by the fact that the they are, well, this is a water buffalo calfskin, so, um, you know, they didn't use the same leather on both, but they, to be honest, they feel very similar uh, to both. The main thing would be the, the grain pattern. Uh, you can see the grain pattern on this other one kind of the full size, and then on this one, uh, it's a little more defined, a little more unique too. Um, but otherwise, this would have made a very nice matching pair. Uh, I would imagine if you were really into the NEB back in the day, uh, and certainly if you guys can find them, I would recommend grabbing an NEB, especially if you're interested. These uh, Cambridge ones are very nice if you guys can find them. Uh, like I said, Oxford also uh, made some NEBs, uh, and I'll do a review of those coming up, and uh, Collins made some NEBs. Uh, although the Collins ones tend to be more rare, I seem I seem to I, I usually tend to see the Oxfords and the Cambridges the most. Um, the Collins like very rarely do I see an NEB. Um, so 
If you guys have any questions, please feel uh, feel free to leave them down below. If you can, please uh, like, comment, subscribe, all that YouTube stuff. Otherwise, Bible Buddies, until next time, bye.